Mining Weekly Online is talking to the CEO of Mintech, Abiel Mgamazulu, and we're talking to him about the prospects for Nanogold. What can you tell us? I'm happy to say the progress that we've made with the project, we're already seeing the fruit. The idea was to look for industrial uses for gold, and the first one that came up was, was uh, catalysis. Um, where in, a, in the, in the mid-80s in Japan it had been discovered that, that gold, which was typically always considered to be too inert, too noble, to act chemically as a, as a catalyst, was discovered that if you go to nanoparticle sizes, which is you know, roughly two nanometers, so that's two billionths of a meter, it's, it's you know, extremely small particle sizes. Once you get down to those kind of particle sizes, suddenly gold takes on a whole new different property, for example, you'll see that it's no longer gold colored, it's purple, wow. changes color, uh, and then it becomes active as a catalyst. We have been focusing mainly on using gold nanoparticles, in particular for cancer therapeutics, um, and then also for obesity research. Gold nanoparticles can be used as a fat reducing agent. This is the kind of gas mask material that we were looking for. So we're looking to, to fill that, that with a um, a gold catalyst. Obviously there's more than just the CO that it, that it has to remove, so there's other components in it. And uh, this was what we developed in, in conjunction with the Spiritech, was you know, the layering of these materials and for example there you can see some, some um, activated carbon. So there's a number of layers in here plus the gold catalyst layer to, to um, function as, a, as a, a, um, a fire escape gas mask. CO2 lasers, for example um, in a CO2 laser as, as, the, as the laser um, functions, the CO2 breaks down into carbon monoxide and oxygen, and the, the oxygen actually um, destroys the lasing action. So there are catalysts in those, in those lasers to convert the CO plus oxygen back to CO2. And the, again, you can't, have, you can't have a huge pressure drop uh, in those systems. And so these kinds of structures, we actually have in field tests at the moment in a, at a, in a company in, in, a, in Pretoria. Which do you think has got the most potential? In terms of market size, um, I, th I would say it, it's going to be um, it's going to be the CO oxidation uh, type. So, so the gas masks and the confined space type environments, which are which um, are coming into to play at the moment. We actually had a a. Um, a request for a quote for three, 300 kilograms this year from a company um, that's, that's been developing these systems. Um, so they've now moved a little bit beyond um, <coughs> development uh, and into actual markets. We have got the malaria rapid test. With the nanotechnology, we find that you are using gold as a lab. This, this is really our first success. We're looking at gold uh, on titania. So you're looking at this kind of material we are developing test kits. We will be, as from next year or early next year, be able to produce even 80 million tests of this type of kits per annum. The other shape form material that we've just developed is these ceramic blocks. So this is an uncoated one. So you can see basically the channels that go through this. So you can have a large gas flow through a, through a device like that. Um, and for example, some of the applications that we will be looking at this would be emission type control applications. Um, for vehicles? For, uh, not necessarily for vehicles, um, but for other kinds of emissions. One of, the, one of them would have been, uh, for example, mercury uh, emissions. In a coal-fired power station you get a lot of mercury, or you can, depending on the coal, you can get some mercury coming out in, in the flue gases and it's elemental mercury, so it's metallic mercury, and that passes straight through the scrubber systems and into the, into the atmosphere. So there's obviously a lot of legislation, particularly in the US, coming around to control, to control that, got that mercury. And it was discovered in the US that, that over gold, if you flow that mercury over gold in the oxygen environment, you get oxidation of the, of the mercury, and then it can be subsequently scrubbed out. We also wanted to, to go for a tender in, 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 in Kenya, because malaria is, is, is very problematic in Kenya. We want to make sure that we can produce this in large quantities and then we also partner with local industry to commercialize our test case. We've yes. gone into a distribution agreement with Strem Chemicals yes. in the USA yes. to distribute um, our Auralite uh, range of catalysts. The more we have partners in doing anything gives us confidence. One of the main things that has come out of it is, is, is the CO. Although gold is active for many other things, the, the very good thing about it is this activity for CO oxidation. 
and there's a number of applications. One is fire, fire escape gas mask, which is what we've, we've also been developing ourselves. But you also get requirements where you need to remove CO from what you, you, you would call a, a closed environment or a confined space environment. For example, military vehicles, um, mine refuge chambers. Key to, uh, to what we were doing was to get it out of the lab and into industrial type environments. And as I said, one was the shape formed type catalyst. And these are it really particles of, um, a couple millimeters where you've coated uh, with, with the gold catalyst. But then also a major, a major new development that has come in the last year or so was to coat these materials onto what's called um, monolith structures. Or um, it's, it's the same structure that you would find in an automotive catalyst where you can get a, a very large air flows or gas flows through, a, through a, a catalyst bed without producing the huge pressure drops. What's come out in the gold is, is what's low temperature activity versus, for example, platinum and those kinds of other things where you need a bit higher temperature. Um, and we've seen some really good results in, in oxidations of things, for example, like glycerol, where glycerol is, there's a huge glut of glycerol on the market coming out of biodiesel. And so we've had a program where we're looking at glycerol and you can oxidize it in the liquid, in aqueous, in water, uh, using gold and air, and you can get to higher value products. Ethanol oxidation, we've been looking at uh, glucose oxidation. As you know, as you may know, glucose to gluconic acid. Now, gluconic acid is actually used massively in the construction industry as a cement additive to modify how the cement sets. So it's actually a huge chemical. So, you know, for gold to break into that kind of thing with, with quite, instead of these fermentation type processes, which, which is not easy uh, chemistry or processing to do, you could go to a, simply a solution where you, you add the gold, add glucose, bubble oxygen through it, and you get the gluconic acid. Around 1998, early 1999, the gold price was hovering at about 300 US dollars per ounce or even lower than that. I remember that pain. There was that pain, and uh, some of us fortunately were part of trying to resolve that problem in the sense that, if you remember, for the first time the country had the crisis, they had, had a very serious crisis, and a crisis committee was formed. It started in 2000. As I'm speaking today, it's only Mintech that's continuing with the project. You mentioned that you, you had growing optimism. What is giving rise to that? When we started, we started with partnership with the mining companies. Now we're starting to have partnership with product developers. There's a big potential. As we continue with it, there are more participants. So I'm hopeful, provided we continuously show what is it that gold in the nanoform can do. You know, there'll be more people interested in it.